Hey, it's Jeremy from Jeremy.net. And I am finishing up this Medusa piece. And I figure, you know, I'll just go ahead and, and run through the rest of it here. If you have not watched any of my videos before on a, uh, on a desktop computer in full screen, I would actually recommend giving it a shot with this particular video. Because just for a change of pace, normally I have it in a tiny little preview window while I'm recording the audio for this. But I just decided to watch it full screen. And I've got to tell you, looking at this on my computer full screen, it really does feel like it did when I was sitting at the table drawing it. Like it really kind of puts me back into that whole mindset all over again. Like I'm kind of re-experiencing it, which, you know is really interesting just to, to watch your artwork kind of unfold in that way because I have both that side of me that's critical and analyzing things, but also I've got a little bit of detachment where I can appreciate some of the things that I, I tried to pull off here. This is definitely an ambitious piece for me. I don't usually do pieces that are, are full size. This is a, uh, not full size, but a large size. I think this was uh, 11 by 14. You know, so, you know, smaller than a comp book cover, but I don't usually do too many splash pages. I only usually do one splash page per issue. So this is would fall into something in that category. But also, I don't necessarily put as much detail into my pieces as I do with this one. You know, a large part of that is how much texture work there is going on with the uh, with the statue. But there's also the the number of snakes that I'm drawing here. It's funny watching me redraw this piece again because as I go through here and, and work on the snakes I can see little changes that I made to accommodate the size and complexity of the piece because once I start getting into drawing the coils of the snakes I'm really I'm making an effort to work left to right so I don't smear the ink and put my hand in any wet spots but the way that I usually work is I will work over the whole piece in one pass like you saw in the previous video doing the holding line and usually by the time that's dry I can kind of come back and start working on the detail but with this I really do have to be pretty careful to work left to right to not smear anything and the interesting thing that I'm noticing here is that while I am pleased with the results I'm happy with how this piece came out I definitely feel like I need to improve at drawing snakes I obviously ended up going for stylized serpents here instead of doing a photorealistic rendering. A few other Medusa pieces that I'd practiced recently, I tried to go more for drawing all the scales, and it became both tedious and it just didn't have an execution that... It felt a little stiff and stale. It was texture for texture's sake instead of actually really making it feel like a living, breathing serpent. Because I don't necessarily believe in, uh, I mean, I'm more of a, a cartooning illustrator, a comic booky illustrator, as opposed to someone who practices realism. So for me, it's more important that something feels like a snake than it is that it looks like a snake. But in drawing all of this, it makes me realize that I definitely wanna start putting more practice into drawing serpents, not because I'm a, it's not a serp reptilophile, I guess, would that be what it is? Um, but it's not necessarily that I'm a fan of snakes. In fact, when I was a kid, I was very afraid of them. I, you know, now I just sort of look at them like other animals. But it's more of the fact that anything that I have difficulty drawing, anything that's a challenge for me to draw, my usual instinct is to lean into that and start drawing it all the time to really practice it. Like, it used to be that I was very, very bad at drawing women. Now, this goes back to high school. And, you know, when I first started drawing comp books and, and drawing artwork, superheroes were very much an influence on my, of mine. So, you know, I was drawing a lot of large, muscular characters. But my female figures really suffered. I didn't really have a good sense of them. And part of that, I think, is being a high school boy. I think part of that is that I hadn't taken any actual figure drawings. And if anything, figure drawing class has really helped me in terms of drawing the female form. But I made, it a, made a concerted effort in my early years, like post high school, kind of like in college in my early 20s, to start drawing women all the time just because I was bad at it. And I think through that, I gradually improved. 
Now, the fact that I was having trouble with snakes in terms of getting the feel that I wanted tells me, one, yeah, I, I do need to practice and, and focus specifically not just on snakes, but on animal drawing in general. There's a lot of work that I need to do in terms of doing some animal drawing. I just remembered at some point in this video, Khaleesi pops in, so I can always practice drawing one of my cats. I think every time I'm working at the table, at least once per session. If it's a long enough video, she'll, she'll try to get in there. But um, it's often said that comic book artists need to learn how to draw everything because you're trying to create a convincing world. And it doesn't necessarily mean that everything has to be photorealistic, but it means that everything does have to feel like it's of a piece that it belongs in this world. When you draw snakes, it should look like, in this world, this is what snakes look like. If you're drawing cats, it doesn't have to be a photorealistic cat, but it has to be a cat that belongs in this world you've created. And by that token, I very much agree with the idea that a comic book artist kind of has to learn how to draw everything. And there are still a lot of things that I don't draw very well. Animals are on that list, um, environments, nature in general i mean city backgrounds are a little bit easier in the sense that it's grids and blocks and buildings and if you add the correct flourishes and putting windows make sure that the the windows are in proper proportion to the the buildings and the figures that are in and around those buildings you don't really necessarily need to know as much about how something looks with buildings you can kind of understand the structure of how it's put together and just follow the logic you might be able to say the same of animals and nature, but I think that there's more work to understand that, that logic. So this piece definitely was both a pleasure, but it's also humbling because it reminds me that I can't sit on my laurels. I need to keep pushing and finding time to do not just my comic book work, but to study and learn how to draw the things that I, I don't necessarily draw as fluidly or as well as I, or as convincingly as I'd like. Something else that I also should keep in mind, and I'm constantly trying to remind myself, is to put the things that I have difficulty drawing to work those into my comics. Because then the comics are the main thing that I am drawing on a daily and weekly basis. So if I remind myself, hey, put in more animals, put in more of this, more of that, more environments then it's going to force me to practice these things and really start working on developing that logic and developing my own sense of style, my own sense of what these things should look like in my world. So that's something I also need to keep reminding myself of. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm overall pleased with the way this came out. The, the hardest part was staying focused because it really is easy to get a little bit bored when you're just rendering these types of textures over and over and over again. And it's fighting to not put in lines just because there's a place to put lines in, but trying to get them to mean something and describe something. So yeah, I definitely need to work on these, uh, the, the scales and the textures for snakes. Cause these coils are convincing, but you could also just as easily look at it and feel like it's the coils of like large, thick dreadlocks or, or cornrows. Like it could also just look like thick hair. Now that plays into the benefit of this piece, but I think that I might lose a little bit of the creepiness that a, uh, a Medusa or a Gorgon, I know they're called Gorgons. I had somebody point that out to me the other day, not in my, my videos. But a friend of mine was just like, you know, they're called Gorgons. And there, there's three different Medusas. They're sisters. And Medusa is just one of them. And I haven't read any mythology in a while. But I do remember reading those things and knowing that it was Medusa is her name. And that Gorgon is the name of the species. So going forward, I think I'm going to start titling these pieces as Gorgons as opposed to Medusas. So. Oh, there was, um, there was something else that I remember now I wanted to mention, or at least ask you guys. So what is it that you're most interested in seeing in these videos? Do you care whether I'm drawing comic book work, or do you care whether I'm doing various types of illustrations? And I'm asking because I am moving towards starting a Patreon, and I'll probably, right now, think about surrounding or focusing the Patreon more on my, my comic book work 
and creating sort of a more structured environment. So you'll still be getting the behind the scenes of my work and seeing a lot more. Like I'll also be including a lot of the stuff that are um, the day-to-day posts that are from my blog and newsletter. I'm going to kind of consolidate that into the hub for people to kind of watch over my entire creative process. But I'm really curious how many people are watching this and are interested in illustration in general, in comic books in specific, the creative processes of artists. So I'd like to know what it is that you want to see most. And if I did add new types of videos or created videos that were especially just for the Patreon feed, what type of content would you want to see? Is it more about having live streams that are just limited to Patreon subscribers? Is that um, something that you'd be interested in so you could actually sit down and have conversations? Um, are you more just interested in having bonus videos that you don't necessarily, you know, seeing even more of what I'm working on on a, a day-to-day basis? So there's, you know, there's a lot of different things that I could go to in terms of adding into try and make this an experience that's worthwhile for you. But I, that's the main question is what are the things that you get the most out of? Are there other Patreon, um, Patreon supported YouTube channels that you use that you watch that you feel like you get a lot of value out of and what are the things that you enjoy seeing from them that you might want to see from me? Thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like and share them. Visit my resources page for free creativity tools and comic books at resources.jeremy.net. That's resources.g-e-r-i-m-i Dot net. Also, visit my main website, jeremy.net, where you can buy my comic books, art prints, and more. There's also links to my Instagram, Twitter, and other social media accounts. That's it for now. Go be creative.